Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Get Your Paint On. Today, this Thursday, I am joined by quite a few people here uh, this morning. It's a party. It's a party. It's there party. are more than three of us. There's the, Yeah, a there's a lot of us here. So, if we get a little bit of a sound off from everybody who's here, can I get started with Tony Honecheck? Good morning. And then the Oz, Schoonover. <laughs> no one ever pronounces my name right. <laughs> <laughs> Schoonover. Yeah. There you go. I'm here. Yeah, I know how to say it, Oz. I was just being weird. I know, I know. That's fine. And then Lauren Lauer. Lauer. I, Why am I question marking my I, own name? I was saying Lauer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't. I don't know. Does that mean we get to choose a last yeah. name for you now? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So we've got Lauren on second, uh, not Mike, uh, second screen today. We're gonna be painting some models. Yeah. She uh, came up with some pretty sweet ideas for us to paint Zizrex. So uh, <laughs> some we ideas we're not going to use. Some also. ideas that we're not going to use. No, we're totally going to use those ideas. <laughs> I, s- I still think we should go banana colored. No, definitely not going to use that idea. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I'm uh, talking about. That's <laughs> the one yeah. Uh, so before we do that, we're going to hop into a couple announcements really quick, you guys. First thing is the stream schedule. Nothing crazy here today. Pretty much everything as normal. Uh, so nothing new to announce. Uh, subscriptions. Uh, Still waiting on our 120 subs for the Riot Quest loot coin. Um, Thank you, everybody who is subscribing. And uh, anybody who subscribes to us will get all our sweet emotes and will get us towards getting our Riot Quest. And also get that that subscriber badge. And get the subscriber badge. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, Savage Mini Crate. We've got a couple of new things here today, which I'm actually super excited about. Um, We've got a new Conan the Barbarian. mini crate model for the Savage mini crate. This is sweet. I actually really like this model a lot. Mm-hmm. And we have Red Sonia as well. Uh, these are yeah, both really, really, cool, really cool. I'm really excited we got an active Conan. That Conan on the yeah. throne is cool. Yeah, no, it's so cool. Can, can He's swing. awesome, but this, yeah. is, this is Conan doing stuff. Yep, yeah. Which, of course, we all know that he does. Lots yeah, of stuff. This, and this is much easier to use in like an RPG or, you know, in a narrative oh, scenario yeah, totally. or something. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited about these. Uh, these are available through February 12th for Conan the Barbarian. And the next six months, I believe we just switched over on uh, Red Sonia. Yeah, Red Sonia is yeah. available <laughs> until yeah. July. So, so she'll be available for a while, but you have to subscribe to the six-month subscription to get her. Uh, let's go to the regular mini crates. We've got the Grim Stalker, who's available through the end of this week, uh, January 19th. Uh, and then the VIP model, the Transfer Dancer, through February 19th. Yeah, there's only a couple of days left on that Grimstalker. Yeah, no, only, there's like three days left. Yeah. So um, if you want to get that sweet model, uh, which I actually really like, and Stalkers are dope, so you should definitely get some. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, subscribe by the end of this week. I'll get as many as I can for my Crooks Army, that's for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. So today we have the Zizorax. Yeah. This model's sweet. Uh, Lauren, would you like to tell everybody in the chat what well, your plan was? Uh, there's some carapace on this. I want to learn how to do some <coughs> black carapace because I have always had trouble going black on black color schemes. Mm-hmm. So, cool. Teach me the way, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to do like a flat black or like a reflective black? Reflective black for okay. sure. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, but we can definitely do it. We we'll kind of walk through the process. Um, first things first, though, we're actually going to have to rebase coat the armor black. Um, actually, when I'm painting black, <laughs> I prefer to work over a black base coat instead of a zenithal highlight. Sorry. Sorry, Tony. <laughs> Information that would have been good to know yesterday. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. but they show up better on the stream this way. That's true. So to intro the stream, it, it's easier to see how the It also would have looked very odd if like just the carapace was painted black. Yeah. It's it's all right if you so. just talk about what an amazing job I did on that zenithal highlight. You did that a terrible for, job. I would never ever support you priming saying that before it was you cover anyway. it up. Oh, that would be on. awesome. I'm just I'm just being a butt. Uh, Tony did a great job doing the zenithal. You know, what, Tony, your zenithal highlighting has become much better. Uh, I have I have good mentors. Well, Aww. thank you for that. I mentored him. <laughs> <laughs> uh Man, I'm so happy that Snowpocalypse is pretty uh, pretty much over. Yeah, well, yeah, and oh even goodness. even I'm I'm actually uh, I'm, I'm proud of us because even with Snowpocalypse, we managed to get every stream on this week. Yep, we didn't miss a single schedule. Yeah, I feel like it wasn't as bad as last year. It wasn't. It well, wasn't. I think I think people were uh, around here were anticipating it to be as bad as last year. Yeah. As soon as they heard there was going to be snow, Tony, you can say hope. Yeah. You can say we were hoping hope, for. We're it to hoping it was going to be as bad. 
I, I'm really happy that it was not as bad as last year. Yeah, last I, year was brutal. I took my kids out sledding. We did have one day um, of, of real good snow on Monday. And uh, I took my kids out sledding in the park um, where there's just there's a nice hill. And it just, it was really, it was kind of disappointing. They ended up just kind of sliding around in like icy mud most of the time. Couldn't get up a lot of speed, so. Yeah, I feel bad for uh, some of my my friend, my roommates. They were just like, totally unable to work at all this week. So he was just like complaining about being bored all weekend or, or all, all weekend. And then most of the week, don't they have video games or something? Yeah. But after a while it gets mm, pretty boring. Not if you do it right. I mean, he's not really like the video game type. Oh, okay. Like he plays video games, but he doesn't really. Okay. You know? uh, I had plenty to do. I could have stayed home for another couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'm one of those people. I'm, just too too social. Oh, Lauren, I gotta uh, get out of the house every once in a while. Center up there. Yeah, there you go. Sorry um, about that. So, and Adam is actually asking uh, Jordan, do you mind giving a, a 360 on Zizzerax just of to get a nice, nice little look at the whole mm-hmm. thing here? Check he's God, dude. he's so buff, dude. He's swole. How do you get buff with an exoskeleton? That's what I want to hear. You're born that way. You're born, born that, that way. way. It's just you know, just the right amount of. Whatever weird radioactive waste. Play Pokemon catch them. Got into <clears> the <throat> beetle eggs. Is that what happened? Is that the story behind the Savage There's Swarm? There's no official story behind the Savage Swarm. It's one of those mysterious factions of like something's weird is going on and who even knows. Yeah, there are big bugs. They're Somebody giant screwed bugs. up somewhere. Generally, giant bugs are caused by radiation in most tropey type things. Okay. But we haven't ever specifically said, yes, they're radiation. Globicus and the Waste, since they're called the Waste. Oh, man, um, that model turned out sweet. I'm yeah, so you, guys, you guys knocked out that model quick. <clears throat> the, and for that, we have to say both those models because... Oh, yeah, that's there's, true. Yeah, there's two. Because the thing about Globicus that's the most fun about it is it's a double monster. When do, we, has, show, when do we show those off? Uh, we haven't showed them off. I mean, we can... They're here in the building. Their their packaging is getting ordered today, I think. So that yeah. Yeah. so the the model is painted. Jordan yeah, just finished it with some help from Tony. Yep. Yeah, Tony helped me out. Real fun. I did I got in? Yeah. I got into the studio. Did some work. Yeah. But yeah. Globicus has a special rule called bifurcate, and it means that uh, you start with one model in play, and when it goes hyper, you put a second model into play, and then there are two models. So you got double monster action when you're playing with Globicus. Um. Hungerford is in chat. Hi, Hungy. Here's a question for me. Dear Tony, if one of your kids woke you up in the middle of the night screaming about a monster in the bedroom and upon entering their room, you saw a bug with abs, how would you react? <laughs> well, I think the problem is that like, I would never get to their room because if my children were screaming about a monster, I would be saying safe in my bedroom. Mm. Um, oh, and you're just that kind of dad? You know, Number well, one parenting hey, skills. You got you to gotta grow up and deal with your own problems. Know what I'm saying? Like, that's how you become an adult. It's true. Your, your children are very far away from being adults. Well, yeah, because they got to take care of their got, own things, things right? right? Like, stopped. that's what I'm saying. I'm turning them into yet. capable, uh, self-actualizing adults by not responding to their night terrors. That's I, savage. I was, I'm, I'm glad you're not my dad. I was really <laughs> hoping that Tony's answer would be a flex-off. <laughs> <laughs> he would... Just flex at the monster and just see what happens, and they just both start posing. <laughs> That's so. Oh, cool. are we doing this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was that voice? Tony, don't ever, uh, don't ever change. That was my wrestling voice. Don't ever change, Tony. <laughs> you're, you're perfect. Just oh, Tony, you, you would lose a wrestling match to Zizorax. Oh, but I, you might not lose a hundred percent, but a flex off, I could do it. Now, is he like human size? Uh, in this it, well, or it, is he like so? Hungerford scenario, size? he'll have to specify, but he said you walk into your child's room and you see a bug with abs. Bug with abs. If you walked in your child's room and the wall had been torn away and you saw a monster that was 60 stories high with abs, that's different than a bug with abs. I mean, right now, the bug could be bug sized, could be a tiny little beetle with abs. That's it. So here you are I think I would in your be room, Tony. Less, <laughs> I would be less scared of a monster, of a bug monster that was two stories tall or 15 stories tall or whatever than a bug that's like the size of my pinky finger. Person size, yeah. Yeah. 
It's one of the things I really like about Monster Apocalypse models is that they can do double duty in RPGs and stuff as people-sized monsters or larger. Like, if you're running some sort of RPG campaign and you're going into the Andes Mountains or whatever and you want to say there's Yetis there, you could pick up a white Jean and use him as a Yeti in a 28 millimeter. Oh, yeah, they totally fit. He's two or three times bigger than a person, and it it would work perfectly fine. So you could use Zizorax as some sort of twice the size of a person monster. Umber Hulk? Yeah, there's there's some D&D bug monsters and some other things like that. You could also just make up your own giant I'm like totally (laughs) way off camera. My goodness. Where's your where's your stay on target target? Um, you know, Jordan I'm, Jordan's I'm too rebel. good for that. Oh. Also, people keep on removing it every time I put it on. <laughs> so maybe I have it over. Maybe here? people are just playing tricks on me. They're just like, you know, Jordan put this thing on here so that he could be cool and you know have stuff on target all the time. But we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna take it off and make him have to deal with it. No, Travis, you don't want to see a privateer press staff flex off. It's not. Oh, it's not gonna I'll happen. Par- I'll participate in the flex off. I'll win too. You guys don't even know my flex prowess. Yeah, no, I'm going to leave that one alone. Nothing? <laughs> all right. Just crickets. Crickets? Jeez. Jeez. All right, then. All right. Andrew DeRoma, uh, I don't hope my kids go hyper. Hope is not necessary. They will go hyper whether I hope it or not. <laughs> hyper is a thing. Children. I don't have to be Dude. on board for that to happen at all. Like, it just, it's just it occurs. It's just going to happen, yeah. All right, well, we're, we're getting close to finishing all the base coating on this, yeah. this carapace. The main thing I think we're going to work on this afternoon, this morning, my goodness, this afternoon. This ain't going to be that long with stream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as much fun as that would be. Um, day long stream. Day long stream. That'd be kind of sweet. I'd have a good time with that. Maybe paint some studio models on stream. What do you guys think of that? I'm up for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We just have a day long paint jam instead of just during lunch. Approved. I'm all about paint jams. Paint jams are sweet. So tell me about like what's the so now that you got the black down, what's going to be the general approach to painting the black so, carapace? Yeah, so so generally the the like typical rule of thumb um, is you want to keep like half of the surface of whatever you're painting. Like so, pick out an armor plate. So like this one right here on top, right? This okay. one in the middle. Um, and you're going to paint like half of it black, and then the other half you're going to do all your hi- highlighting on. Okay. Um, that that generally keeps things looking black, um, and you do like a small progression from like black into gray into white. Okay. Um, and making something look more reflective is a um, that that progression of like the transition from black to white is much in a, in a much more condensed area. Okay. So it's like instead of having you know a small gradient on you know half of half of the material, your gradient will go half of the material is black, then like half of that is like a really dark black gray, and then the rest of it shifts to okay. to white, um, which is why. It, it can be a lot more difficult because you have to do a transition in a short window of, of space. Um, if that makes any sense, which hopefully it does. So, I mean, that, well, that is definitely one thing that I've struggled with in trying to do similar stuff with, uh, with dark colors. And I think white too, but it's just forgetting to leave how much you have to leave of the original yeah. layer on there. So the first highlight layer is going to be... Um, Coal black and Thamar black mixed together. Okay. And we're going to just do this on the upper, like, 50% of this. Get on camera, Jordan. Get on camera. I'm on camera. There you go. Get you more on camera. Excuse me. (laughs) Pardon me. Pardon. Not not like you're a professional or anything. It's not like I'm a professional. (laughs) How about we just paint off camera for everybody? (laughs) (laughs) How about no, that? No you guys like that? You guys no like that better? This. How about that? <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. We can we can paint on camera. So let's try and hit that you know upper raised portion of the plate center with up, that center color. up on camera. 
My goodness. You, you know what? All right, we're we're putting <laughs> we're doing something about this. Hold on, everyone. I got a little piece of tape here. Jesus. Ter me. Tearing tape. Yeah, this tape isn't going to tear very well. All right, we're just going to put that there. So I don't. Is that forget. it, Tony? Yep. Pretty good. All right. Uh, everyone, everyone's talking about your betrayal of me last week. Yeah, yeah. Did people like that. I think people uh, enjoyed that. Apparently, they're very entertained by it. Um, we, uh, Tony didn't like it very much. Yeah, you know, new rule. <laughs> Jordan doesn't get to do that anymore. Um, what? Yeah. What happened? What did I miss? Yeah, I didn't watch last week. Oh, so um, Tony convinced me to paint uh, the dress on the Damaret Advocate green. Oh, yeah. I, I was only I like that part. kind of into, um, and it was like. Just kind of struggling with it the whole time. I was just like not really happy with how it was turning out. Uh, and then I was just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to paint this thing red. So I just like totally go paint over like the, the bulk of the back part of the dress just completely red. <laughs> and, and I do it in the middle of Tony's like rant about something. I don't really remember what he was saying. He was saying something um, and wasn't paying attention at all. So I just like kind of got away with it for a while, yeah, uh, without him saying anything. And then somebody said something in chat, and uh, Tony found out and was Not. was sad. <laughs> I'm suffering an angry silence over yeah. here. Yeah, that's okay. Tony Still bitter. Survive. The green looked so good. It looked fine. It looked, it looked good. pretty good. I didn't catch that part. I I didn't have the sound on, so I didn't know what you guys were doing. But I saw you paint. Over <laughs> yeah, something that you had red. painted that looked pretty good. Uh, Rusty Goblin Miniatures is asking why you use double stick tape instead of sticky tack. Um, uh, I am notoriously bad at using sticky tack. It never sticks to anything for me. Yeah, to, uh, I've used it in the past, and I prefer double stick tape when I'm trying to secure yeah. something to a handle because I, it's just way more secure. Yeah, I have never had anything with sticky tack ever stay in place. For well, either. And, time. and I can say that Jordan, uh, normally I would mount this to the top of the, the lids, but I had to have Jordan do it this morning because he is so... I'm a professional. Yeah, heavy and big. Um, Excuse me? That I just... <laughs> that was an inappropriate <laughs> comment there, Tony. I know I'm a little fluffy, but you know what? I take offense to that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the model <laughs> is so heavy I, and I got big. Tony, everyone. I got him back. <laughs> I got him. I caught him. Uh, For the record, I'm, I did not take any offense. <laughs> just just going to clear that for now. Canceled, it was Tony. a joke. It was a joke. I'm very comfortable with myself. I'm a fluffy boy. Oh, yeah. Travis is standing up for me. Yeah. Oh, I will, I will make fun of Tony all day long. I love it. <laughs> it's, my, it's my pastime. Uh, my Rusty Goblin thing. Miniatures is talking about using blue poster tack. can find the model falling off. If it's too heavy, yeah, I've had similar experience. If it's a tiny model, like some of the Mompok units, I, I think you might be able to get away with it um, if they're not too top-heavy. But I've found that sticky tack is... Uh, it Sometimes works it works okay, me. but it's just it ends up not being reliable, and then next thing you know, your model's just hitting the table. Bam! Yeah. I pin my Monpok units to two-liter bottle lids mm -hmm. when I paint them because I want to keep my bases clear. So uh, I'm but adding a little monsters, bit... I I'm going to interrupt stick. real quick. I'm adding sure. a little bit more coal black to this uh, this mix so that I get a little bit more of that, that teal blue color in there. Um, I'm going to apply it to a little bit more of this area. I've actually tried a new strategy with painting my Monpok units. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I want to see how it goes. I left the, the clear cellophane on the bases yeah. and pinned it in place, and I'm hoping I can remove the cellophane and all the paint. It's going to be awful if it doesn't work. It like might a, work. <laughs> like around the feet? It might work. Yeah. Oh, okay. I want to see it, yeah. I office. did a project. I did a project a couple years ago where I was doing uh, servitors oh, gosh, for convergence, and I used some of that cellophane wrap that's really sticky oh, my goodness. to wrap around the flight stands, and I primed them, and it worked pretty good. So that tape, that that stuff that comes on it should work fine. It's just you might not be able to easily pull every single bit of it out of underneath. 
yeah. feet and stuff. Can, I am definitely worried about that. Can we get a power Tony Kona check? check. Uh, Steve James is asking, um, what faction Zizorax is from? Oz, do you want to tell us a little bit about Zizorax? Zizorax is infection? from the Savage Swarm. Zizorax is the very first monster and very first model in general from that older faction from original Monpod. So the way we're doing releases in this edition is we're often bringing back classic stuff. Every once in a while, Sergeant Titanica or Galapagos, and especially um, this coming summer when the dragons and the Russians come out, brand new stuff is happening. But we're also bringing back a whole bunch of classic stuff, and we're either bringing them back in large drops, like the Apes and Ubercorp, or we're doing them kind of trickling out slowly. So the very first thing we did for that was Hammerclack and Kraken Octus. And these guys, uh, Incinerus and Zizorax, are the, are the last unrepresented factions from the original game. So they are Elemental Champions and Savage Swarm. And uh, Elemental Champions are good guys, and Savage Swarm are destroyers. So uh, expect more big giant bugs in the future. I just haven't decided which big giant bug it's going to be. Can we get a moth? I've been wanting a moth forever. Well, generally right, well. I'm trying to bring back classic things before adding new things. Sure, sure. And Hungerford has been has been trying to convince people for over a year that the bee no. is what the next monster for this faction should be. <laughs> no, no. So I don't, I don't know how much of this you guys can see. This is still pretty subtle yeah. on, the, on the color shift here. I was um, kind of worried this was not going to be camera friendly. <laughs> yeah, I, the first couple of layers aren't. Um, I think this next layer is going to start seeing a little bit more um, color in there. Hey, this will take some patience. You have to wait for the results. Guys, I mean, you can see it. it. You, you can see it shows it up on camera. You can see it. it yeah, but it's it is subtle. It's subtle, it's subtle yeah. Um, and coal black is a dark color, and then you added black to it. Yeah, so. yeah. So I'm going to add just a touch of great coat gray to the previous mix. Um, just a little bit. I just want to brighten it up a hair. Um, and I'm, I'm basically going to mix everything into the previous mixture and build up that color um, slowly. So um, starting here on the back. And so you went down about 50% with the last layer. Yeah. So what's, what's kind of your guiding point um, on this one? Just by look. It's just like, does it look right to me? And if it does, then awesome. If it doesn't, then I have to adjust it. Um, but this is kind of going on the upper like quarter. So I didn't make it see that out oh. of the glare. This is a bit brighter. Oh, I do like that recommendation, Oz. Can we put a can can we request a scorpion to be added to the future it's possible. list? It's possible. Scorpion would be a, a really So the good thing one. I'm considering right now for these guys is their units. They had they had beetles and grasshoppers and ants and a roach thing that was a pseudo scorpion, the kind of bug that raises its tail to try to scare the bugs. And then they had the spy fly, which was a fly with giant eyeballs. And that's the one thing I know I'm gonna bring back. Because it's a spotter unit, and destroyers don't have a spotter unit yet. There's two spotters on the protector side, uh, and there's no spotters on the destroyer side for units yet. So I'm going to do that. But I'm trying to figure out what the mainline thing was going to be, whether it's going to be... big eyeballs, they're spotters. Yeah. Whether it's going to be beetles or ants or something new. And it could be scorpions. You never know. It could be. You never know. Yeah, I'm, You'll I'm, never know. Uh, that... Those unit blisters are probably not going to come out in the next six or more months. So I've got time to decide. Because we put out uh, Hammer Clack and Crack and Octus last spring. I think it, May. Jeez, has it been that long? It's been a long time. Wow, okay. And then uh, they didn't get <laughs> units until, until uh, Just now. January. Yeah. yeah. They're getting the crabs and eels and the Molochs. Mm -hmm. And we may, I believe, we have on the schedule for the next staff showdown will be the Monster Apocalypse, ga Monster Apocalypse game that we were going to play this week. Yeah. And that will feature some of those new units, the crabs and eels and the, um, the Molochs. Yep. Yeah, they're in the case right over there. I can see them from here. 
Ooh. Everything is all ready. So this, this release schedule will more than likely be sometime oh, more than six months from now, a second giant bug will come out and a blister of units for them. Nice. Okay. But, I'm excited for that. But who knows? I had a, a absolute blast painting this guy for the studio. He, he looked real good, cool. too. Yeah, yeah. We showed him off on a, <clears throat> on a dev hangout. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah he was a lot of fun. Him and Incinerous. It was a really cool pair of models to paint. At the same time. Well, Incinerous has all that fire to play around with. Yeah. And I'm really I, I actually had more fun painting the metal than I did with yeah. the fire. I'm looking forward to seeing how many people go with non standard fire colors for that model. Because orange red is pretty normal, but I wonder or if there's gonna be green fires and blue fires. I think some purple fire would yeah. look I wanna see like a copper burning, great. like that that blue yeah. green. So you guys can see kind of that it's shifting in color, right? Like it doesn't look quite black anymore. It's got that like Healish shift in color oh. from the from the brighter. Here, let's swap. Let me let's swap and see what what yours looks like, and can kind of see what I'm doing over there. Oh, my yours arm's not long enough. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> I have short arms, everybody. Yours is way subtler than mine. Yeah, but I I mean you you definitely have the right idea. I think um, so. You can see on kind of on mine, how I'm taking that highlight all the way up the entire top part of the armor plate. Okay. So right now you can see that that highlight you're doing is just coming on the edge here. Mm -hmm. You actually want to keep this area down here dark and okay. you want to keep the top area brighter. So you should be able to see kind of the placement of my highlights on there, mm -hmm. um, which I think will, will help you a little bit. And the rest of this kind of looks correct from what I'm seeing. So, uh, um, yeah. I just kind of want to rephrase it for, for the viewers. Is what you're saying is that you want to be focusing on the physical top right. of the miniature rather so, than following the edge. Yeah, so you're going to do edge highlights anyways because the edge is always going to reflect, like have a reflective um, finish to it. Okay. So that's going to be that highlight on the edge that you're going to want. But you still want to like paint the volume, and what I mean by that is like the shape, like each plate has its own volume that it takes up, right? Like paint the plate as if it were interacting with light separately from everything else. Okay. Because um, each plate is technically separate and light will interact with it. Getting into reflective light on reflective light on reflective light is totally not something we're going to do right now. But <laughs> it's a thing you can do, but it's complicated. Um, but yeah, so I would definitely like stick to doing the highlights. And this is just wet; it's not actual paint. Um, paint my model. I don't care. Make it better. But yeah, so I mean, I can, I can just do a little bit here just to show you. But like coming in up here, we're just right over the top. Okay. And then I would go back in, and I would put black down in, in the recesses here. Okay, I can do um, that. And I think that will it'll give you a better overall look. In the end, because yeah, you got the right idea on this on this bottom plate here. Like you got all this highlight coming across this top area, um, but I think here definitely you want that, that highlight. I mean, you got the right color because the the color I'm painting on here is basically the same color you're painting on. Um, I think but you just wrong place. Okay. Yeah, wrong place. You got the right color shifts going on. <clears throat> so I'll swap back. Trade Thank places. You. God, your arms are so much longer than mine. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I have really short arms, everybody. It's a problem. I, I can reach all the problem. high shelves. I, can't, I, I mean, I can. I just have to like get on my tippy toes to do it. <laughs> um, I am going to go with a brighter color now. So we're going to add um, a little bit of frostbite. Frostbite? Yeah. The chat has devolved into Private Your Press is just going to ship boxes of bugs to people. Real live no. bugs. No, no we are not because I hate bugs and we're not going <laughs> to have that happen here. Okay? Not ever, 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 ever are we going to do that. I mean, no. what, two years I ago we had it. that ant problem. No, <laughs> no, no. We did not. Didn't happen. Ignore what Lauren just said. She's wrong. Wrong. The, the chat is also asking, Colossal Smurf wants to know if you've got your hands on Leviathan or Blastic Cutter yet. Maybe. Or packaging painting. Did you mix the frostbite in or did you? Uh, yeah, I mixed the frostbite in and then I added a touch more uh, coal black because it was a little bright. 
Um, <laughs> Can we make a spy fly mini crate in a trench coat? Travis, we, we already did that with uh, uh, Longfellow. It's not really a trench coat, but yeah, close. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a creepy crawly wearing clothes. So Alex on Facebook wants to know which is worse, a box of ants, ticks, roaches, or bears. I feel like a box of bears is worse. I'll take I'll take the bear. Yeah, because it's a big items. box. <laughs> the shipping is so expensive. <laughs> oh, but I mean that's the real terror is the yeah. shipping. Yes, no, you're Plus, right. It's like just... if they put it if they put it on your porch, it probably blocks your door. No, nope. so you just open but, your front door and there's a nope. just no a one bear box. Steal your packages again, though. Uh, mm, <clears throat> probably not. Striker, if ever, anybody directs me to pack bugs. In anything, I'm just going to walk away. Maybe run. I might run away. In fact, some of you might remember this. When we were unpacking, um, <laughs> we were moving into this new place. Um, there was like some bees that were flying around everybody. Oh, I and I was standing next to people, and there was like a bee that was sticking around me. And I was just like, nah, I'm not having any of this. And I just... Booked it <laughs> down the road <laughs> to run away from the thing. And it was just like keeping up with me the whole time. Yeah, they do that. <laughs> yeah. So I kept, I just ran, like, it was fast. I came back and somebody was just like, I didn't know you could run that fast. That was, that was nuts. <laughs> Travis is asking if the, uh, if the bugs can be encased in amber or gems. Does that change it for you if they're like? Nah, dude, nope. Locked, I saw, in, locked in carbonite. I saw a set of custom polyhedral dice that had wasps in them. They were clear, Ooh, that's neat. Ooh. and each of them had had a wasp inside of it. It was pretty awesome. I'll admit it's it's neat. I will not. Nope, not into it. Really? Yeah. You need that bug candy when you were a kid, then. Nope. My my bug my fear of bugs is pretty real. Like there are not a lot of things that like you can mess around with me about, and like I'll get legitimately angry about bugs are one of those like no goes yeah like don't don't even don't mess around like that's a way that you'll ruin a friendship with me pretty pretty quick uh, i do not like bugs at all so word of caution everybody don't mess around with bugs and me so what you're saying is now at cons that everyone your entire desk is just going to have I, rubber cockroaches hidden in nope. every single nook and cranny I'll, I'll, i will i might hit someone <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't know who did it. Oh, I'll find out. You just start hitting people. I have. I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eventually, I'll get the person who did it. <laughs> nope. Nope. Not into it. Not into it at all. So, Jordan, when, yeah. when painting black, yeah. um, it's possible to use... This is, this is only one recipe... Oh yeah, for painting black. Uh, you can pretty much use anything. Like, uh, are there like other other good color combos that um, that you recommend people kind of try out and explore? I, I think it. The cool thing about black is if if you paint it right, you can really use any color. Like this has got a lot of like blue and green in it, but like uh, one of my favorite recipes that I've ever used for painting black is like highlights up to like a moldy ochre. Ooh. Instead of green, like it's just really cool. Uh, if anybody can find a picture of um, Gaston Crossbones, um, his jacket I painted in that black, uh, and it's my favorite um, like shade of black that I painted on a model. Huh? What's up? Tony gave me a look. What do you do? Uh, I'm, I'm laughing. Ponto Hornblower. Oh, yeah. That, thank, that's thank, that's you oh. For, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. I like that. That's uh, you know what? Plus one for Ponto Homeboy over here. Um, y yeah, that's absolutely a spin on that. Um, and it's actually quite a good one too. So, <clears throat> but in this these. circumstance, it's a We're bad one. Yeah, you, don't you like know bugs. what? You know what? You, you know it's actually funny. Bees don't actually bother me that much. Oh, okay. Of all the bugs that exist. Is this a live bee? Because tossing a live bee is very difficult. It doesn't really yeah. go it where you want it. bumbles along. When you, well, you release it at a certain velocity, but then eventually it can counteract that. 
that or, inertia. Or it'll join you. Oz, I just had a Possibly. nerd moment with you because in my head I was thinking something about like, yeah, I just think you increase the velocity of the bee. That's it. Yeah. I mean, distance from you, but that's all. Yeah. Oh, a wingless bee. Right. So you guys should be able to see kind of this this color coming coming alive here on on the back of this good old bug. Yeah. So this is a little bit more of an abrupt transition than I probably should have done because you can see this this kind of line right here where the color is. But that's easy to go fix later. You can come back in with a little bit of a glaze and, and blend that together. Um, it's it's tough to to keep you know, subtle transitions when you're going, starting to go brighter in color. Um, you just got to do it just, at some point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to push that brightness at, at some point, and sometimes it's too much. Um, but it's pretty easy to fix. You just take some of that, like, mid-tone color, and you just kind of blend it in between. Um, and, I mean, this is this is pretty close. Like, uh, there's, there's a couple more, like, highlight layers that I'll, I'll do on top of this. Um, but like this is the bulk of the color I want to see in in this black, and then the rest of it's just kind of going to be a short transition up to white to get that like really sharp reflection. Jordan, you're going to LVO, right? I am going to LVO. So uh, Ponto Hornblower says that if they can find a plush B, you might get hit with it while you're at LVO. Oh, oh, is that was supposed to be plush? I, yeah, I was reading it, it literally it, as plus it's a, B. It's a, it's a typo. Trying to put it together. I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing you, it's supposed to be plush, not plus B. <laughs> it's like if, he's going to throw if, a B at you, and that B is allowed to bring a friend. Yeah, if you throw a, a B plushie at me at, at, uh, at LVO, I'm keeping that B plushie forever, and it will be the new stream partner. Ooh, getting yeah. rid of uh, the pigs. Huh? You know what? i got to have my own thing, all right? And, you know... Hungerford would approve. He would probably... I approve. haven't heard... I guess he's not in the chat anymore because he would be... He'd be all on board with bee talk. We should bring him back to moth talk because I'm still all into moth. Uh, so the problem there is also traditionally moth... Giant moth monsters. No, uh, no, no particular giant moth monster. No, but, you know, yeah. giant moth monsters are good guys. I mean, this is our own thing, though. We can do sure. whatever version of Moth sure. Monster we want. I'm allowed to have my own mascot, okay? The other thing about a Moth Monster, logistically, would be large, flat wings. Could be problematic for production and things. They have never once complained about that before. <laughs> <laughs> you used to work in the mold shop, right? I, I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. That is literally all they've ever complained about. I'm yeah. not. <laughs> and I do when I when I make models, I do try to consider what they will look like, how they will physically get made, you know, what I I don't I don't think a lot about how they'll be painted, but thanks. But I do try to consider at least the logistics of making them. Yeah, I care care about everybody else, but your painter. Well, man. I don't understand <clears throat> painting very well, as we've talked about before. You know, you know what's great about that though. You work literally right down the, op oh, to, to, I know. To, to yeah. the hallway from me. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a nice social guy. Yeah, but you're, guy. Al you're always so busy, I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah, with that's true. Paint, with paint talk. I'm very busy. A lot. So Steve James is asking, uh, what's your recipe for a warm black? And I guess it's specifically looking for, like, protectorate black. Uh, so protectorate black is actually pretty cool. Like, this is pretty close to protectorate black. In fact, this might actually be the recipe for protectorate black. Um, like all the menifixes and stuff that Well, and that black one are, warjack I'm pretty is, sure are exactly this recipe. The one warjack, the <clears throat> reclaimer warjack is yeah, painted black it's, as it's a studio scheme. It's pretty cool, yeah. yeah. Um, you can do a, a warm black. It would be um, you'd probably be in, in like Thamar black with like Umbral Umber or Battlefield Brown up to like a Trollblood Highlight sort of deal. Um, like Trollblood Highlight's a pretty like warm gray. Um, <clears throat> and that's probably like from Trollblood Highlight to like to something. Like I'd probably use Iron Hole as a mid, mid, mid gray or something. Something like that. You'd probably make that work. Um, it's gonna look really brown, uh, but it, you, if you do it right, it'll look like a, a brown black. Um. I was almost imagining a purple black for this. 
Because I don't know. I see Beatles, I think. I mean, that's kind, of, that's kind of why I was talking about, like, you can really do black however you want. Like, it's, it, especially with, like, a reflective, like, shine on this. Like, if you wanted to do this in purple, right, you'd cut out the, um, the coal black and you'd probably use something like um, either beaten purple or probably I'd rather use, uh, to start with, uh, bad bruise. Bad, yeah. Bad bruise up to beaten purple up to um, royal royal violet. Okay. Which is our our new like lavender color is probably what I would use as like the final highlight for that, uh, or maybe something in the like magenta range up to that. Uh, just kind of depends on like what what the color you want to be is. It's it's pretty cool that you can do so much with it. Um, I might do like a another color of black at some point um, on another stream. Might be a cool thing to do, just like weird colors of black. And insects are awesome for uh, using reference for painting. Yeah, they just I, have. Tons I may hate seeing them in person, but they do have a lot of yeah. really interesting um, like colors. Colors that you can use for yeah. various different things. Well, and adding, uh, you know, a lot of them have either like different colored. Uh, stripes or spots or things like that. So it's kind of a painting bugs is also a fun way to get some reference for, for painting a little bit of texture. So here's where I'm going to start doing a little bit of two brush blending. Here, Center up on get, camera. Yeah. Because I want to get a nice smooth blend on this. Um, now you can do this with just, you know, doing your layering plus a little bit of glazing to, to blend the colors together. Um, but I'm used to doing two brush blending, so... It's pretty, pretty easy for me to do. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with what two brush blending is or how it works, um, basically it's a, a technique where you use two brushes, you lay down a color with one brush, and then you feather out that color on top of your previous colors on the other, with the other brush. Yeah, so just, I mean, just in case you're missing it, every time that brush goes off screen, Jordan mm -hmm. is then pulling a new clean brush, basically, uh, to do the blending. So, and that's how you get these like cool, smooth, like highlight gradients like that. So that's like normally, if I were painting like a studio model, I would have feathered out that. See that line, right? I would have feathered that out into the previous layer. I'm on stream and doing the two brush blending is a little bit more time consuming, so like I'm not gonna do that <clears throat> here for everything, but I'll do it a little bit on the highlight stuff just to make sure it looks really, really good. And it is looking really good. But I mean, kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier, like it's it's not really super hard. It's just knowing where and what colors to use. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um I'm even happy with mine. I didn't think that was gonna happen. Well, that's that's the whole point. We gotta get you happy with what you're what you're painting. Is it, is anybody in um, chat going to LVO? I'm I'm assuming Ponto Hornblower is because they want to throw a bee at me. Yeah, threatening you with bees. <sighs> yeah. Travis is gonna be there. Yeah, I know Travis is going to be there. What? I'm excited for that. We should grab lunch or dinner or something while we're there. Here's a really good shawarma place. Am I thinking oh, of... man, that sounds great. No, is wait, there a good I... shawarma place? Am I mean, I think... I'm sure there is. It's Vegas. Am I thinking but... of Gamma or am I thinking of... Oh, you I might be thinking, you're thinking of, of Reno, Nova. Yeah. Okay, okay. Or Nova. Uh, there's, a, there's a fantastic little uh, Mediterranean like metal restaurant. Metal-themed. Yeah, it's, like, it's kind of like Chipotle. Um, in, in style, so it's like a, a conveyor, not conveyor belt, but uh, like a... <laughs> conveyor belt. <laughs> I'm hungry for sushi, apparently, everybody. Yeah. Um, but it's it's cool because it's like you go to Chipotle and you order what you want, and then they yeah. you want like a burrito bowl or something, right? Yeah. You can do that. You can get like a, a, a Euro bowl, and they'll just like put a bunch of the like pasta rice and, and like all the stuff that you want on top of it, and then you just go down the line and you tell them what you want on top of it. Oh. Yeah. And it's like right around the corner from the convention center. So that's, that's or the hotel. But I think that uh, Swinkles was talking about shawarma at 
Gamma Trade Show. Okay. Reno. I, okay. Think, I think that I heard him talking about that the other day. That's probably why I heard about it. I'll go ask him. Probably. Because if it's Vegas, I definitely want some shawarma. Yeah. Carlo is asking if you can two blush, two brush blend with water instead of saliva. Yeah, And totally. get the same totally. reaction. Yeah. Uh, here, I'll switch to doing it here in a second. I have to change the setup a little bit. Um, it takes a little bit more practice because you don't have as much working time um, with the paint. Uh, like, like the way that saliva interacts with the paint is a little different than the way it interacts with water. Um, and it's and it's shorter distance, right? Like rinsing off your brush in a, in a bucket of water and then trying to blend and getting like the right amount of water on your brush versus like being able to control that a little bit more finely with your mouth. Because um, you don't want a lot of liquid. Like the, the, you want a very minimal amount, just enough to keep it kind of damp. Um, but you can do it. I'll, I'll do it here. Um, so, try to, try to get this started. Where am I going to do this? I'll do this on the top part here so you can see it. I'll talk through the brush in my mouth because it's, you know, it's fun. So, do that. Get the brush a little damp. We're going to go in here. We're going to blend. that. So, yeah, you can definitely do it. It just takes a little bit more um, practice. I've done it before. Um, I'll do it occasionally, like, <clears throat> kind of dry out my, my throat after a while if I do it for, like, a long period of time. Like, if I'm, like, doing a lot of two brush blending in a day, like, I'll, I'll get a my mouth will get kind of dry just because I'm, it's like kind of like talking a lot. Uh, if you think about it, like if you talk for a very long period of time, your mouth kind of gets dried out. Um, it's kind of kind of the same thing just because I'm using a lot of my saliva to um, keep keep the brush moist instead of keeping my mouth from being good dry. <laughs> as weird as that might sound. So... Yeah, you can definitely do it this way if you want to not be a brush licking person. So you're saying with the edge highlight, were you literally mm -hmm. just going to hit it with white? Or mm, No. No, okay. I didn't think yeah. so. That's I don't actually think I'm going to bring this all the way up to white. You can. Then maybe I would. If we had more time. Yeah. I mean, we got we got some time. But I'm just kind of hitting these these raised areas, and I might focus on just the back part so we can get a more finished product. Yeah, I gave <coughs> up on like the arms and the legs a long time ago. Yeah, I mean when you're doing something a little bit more focused, kind of like the stream right that we're doing today, it's it's nicer to just work on just like a section. So you go through the whole thing and then mm -hmm. just yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna keep on adding more frostbite to this mix until I get to the the bright color that I want. Now, if, like, mine's all dried out, mm -hmm. I can't just add straight frostbite to it. Would I add more coal black, or...? Um, I'd try and remix it, and I would remix, like, a larger portion of it so it doesn't dry out quite So from, much. like, black and then remix it all the yeah. way up to... Okay. Yeah. That's one of the reasons that wet palettes have a benefit in yep. this, this kind of painting. And, like, I, even I'm adding a little bit more uh, coal black, and I'll touch black back to this because it's a little too bright, but... Colossal Smurf is talking about uh, tattoos because currently they have the old Empire of the Apes logo from Monpok One on one Ooh. shoulder, but we redid that logo, so gotta, another gotta tattoo get is necessary. Yeah. You know, Brian's got a huge Fiora tattoo. I do. Yeah. yeah. Dude's Pretty committed. Red. Pretty rad. I might. Have. I I love his protectorate stuff. His his army is sweet. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. been he's been showing everybody how to. Yeah. Custom sculpt those shields and make the helmet crests on uh, yeah. hobby hangouts. Yeah, the last super uh, duper cool. Last couple of episodes. Oop. 
I'm sorry, I'm off stream. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Travis. Travis is, recommends violence. Travis is yelling at you to stay on target in the chat. Stay on target. And I'm the only one within slapping distance of Jordan, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to mess up his paint job. Or hit the lamp accidentally. That would not be fun. <laughs> that would be pretty funny, actually. If I whacked the lamp into your head? Oh, no, no, not, not that part. Oh, okay. <laughs> not that part. That would suck. What, what part? <laughs> um, the part about him smacking the lamp. Oh. You were laughing at his injury. Well, there is a lot of infrastructure floating around just outside of the camera. Yeah, you, you guys can't see any of it. It's like a jungle of Because you're not wires supposed to see it. But yeah, but just above Jordan's head on that little close cam, there's a lamp. And between him and I, there's the arm of that lamp and the arm of just whatever. Just an arm by itself with nothing on it. It used to have the pallet cam on it. Yeah. But we it absconded with that cam. for something else. Yeah. Tony probably stole it for close cam for dev chat or something and never brought it back. I think we actually used it for the second person. Oh, okay. Because we uh, did not. Well, we had, it, we had it on one of the streams I've been on with the second person cam, too. Mm, I don't so. remember. Tony, Tony has more information about that. Talk to him. I don't know. I don't have the correct information. Consult your local Tony for more information. Go. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <coughs> Tony left the room. He is no longer here. <coughs> <sighs> so where, where are we at on this? We're, I mean, we're pretty much pretty close to being done. Um, just a couple more highlight layers away. Um, but this is kind of the general like look that you want, right? Um, it's like a, it looks very black. It's got this like really nice smooth gradient up into this nice colorful area. And then this will eventually be highlighted all the way up to like a really bright color. Oh, <laughs> what? Tony's breaking things. So that Globicus, huh? These guys want to see Globicus. Well, uh, I didn't yeah. bring it over here. So. Why, why not? Is Tony going to go grab a Globicus? I think, I think Tony might be running the. To grab a Globicus. Is it in the case or is it at your desk? It's at my desk. Okay. Yeah. Is, did he know that before he left? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, think that's why, I think that's why he got up. I don't think he got up just to kick things. And I wouldn't be surprised about that either, but. Yeah. I wonder if he's going to grab both glo Globicai. <laughs> Globicai? I would assume so. Well, like, it's, it's, it's just him. Like, it's still him, right? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't become a different do, entity just Do they share the person. same brain? I I they feel separate? I feel like they share if they you, share their their sentience. If you kill the original Globicus, does the new Globicus just get bigger and carry on? Well, I So most blob monsters in fiction grow as they eat things. So possibly there's a horrible future somewhere where Globicus keeps splitting, and then all the split versions eat more things and grow bigger, and then split more, and then eat more things and grow bigger, and then the entire Earth is one big blob, mm. just floating in space, eating things. Because I think Globageddon. Because I think reabsorbing your your blob bits is also a thing that's probably going to happen in the fiction side of things. But the way it works in the game is that Globicus starts on the table as the larger form of Globicus. And I believe in playtesting right now has four hit points on the alpha side, which is the lowest we've done alpha-wise. And then as soon as you, you put it hyper, you put so a, the second one down, and then both those forms have four hit points apiece. So Globicus total has 12 hit points which is high for most monsters. Um, not, uh, 11 is pretty average. 10 is what fast, hard to hit ninja type people have. And 12 is what people that are a little bit beefier have. And Leviathron might end up having 14. We don't know, we're still testing. But yeah, Globicus has let me play around with what survivability and tankiness means in the game in weird, different ways than just you have a bunch of hit points, and you are hard to hurt. And because Tony's a wonderful human being, he went and grabbed it for you. 
Yeah, your Tony. Office, oh. Your office is like a quarter of a mile from here. Yeah, so. Tony. It's a pretty Tony long ran walk all the way across the building, across town, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely on the other in side. In the, of the snow. In Thank goodness for all the skywalks. And the teleporter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just for the last bit, though. Yeah. It's weird. The teleporter set up right next to his office. He basically just. Mm-hmm. It's because Tony and I are, are good friends, and he comes visit me a lot. So you put the teleporter. It's actually not true at all. Tony, Tony hardly comes to visit. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Tony walked into my office just, just like, like who's this guy? One inch into the doorway yesterday, looked around and walked away. I was I was creeping, <laughs> and we were like, "What are you doing, Tony?" And he's like, "I was checking," and we so were like, "This is this is the glob man himself." <laughs> Globicus. Oh. Mm-hmm. That is primary form. That is big. This is this is big Globicus. That's big Globicus. Turn him, turn him around, Jordan. I'll turn him oh, around. I love that little school bus. We'll see when it comes back the other way. He's got all sorts of debris. The bus is cute. Yeah, I like that bus a lot. Yeah, it's cool. There's a little like sports car down there. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So I think we need. That's the big boy. I think we need a unit model. It's just traffic. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And this is this is the little guy. Yeah, he's the little guy. He's like a building for his punching fist. Yeah. Well, the, there's a rule on these models, and also on the absorber, the the small blob with the uh, cannon arms. It's called improvised weapon. And they get a blue die in their attacks if they're on or adjacent to a debris tile. So whether it's a hazard or rubble, either way, if they are near one of those, they get an extra blue die. Which helps the units out a lot, but also helps the monsters out. Because it basically means that Globicus always has slightly better stats than are printed. Because especially as the game unfolds, there's a lot of debris. But also, coming soon, is going to be a way to remove debris from the table. Ooh. Ooh. Oh man, what's that? It's the, it's the scavenge rule that's on the absorber and on the scavenger van. It's a way to get power dice from debris and also possibly remove the debris from the table. You might salvage it too much. So yeah, I'm trying to play around with the, these, these few months of releases with um, re, reintroducing Ignite to the game to light fires and then putting in scavenge to possibly remove debris to just kind of play around with the state of the late game. Because often, the way the game works right now is there's a lot of rubble and some hazards because stomping puts out fires. So up until now, the later game, if, if it drags out, is just a big flat table of rubble. But with things like Ignite and scavenge, it plays around with it a little bit. Nice. Sorry, I'm so focused on no, hanging this. Yeah, this I, was black. Just, I was just thinking, like, I love <coughs> how high you're bringing that up, how poppy it's, it's getting right there. I love it. It looks almost like a, this weird kind of glow. Yeah, it's supposed to have that, like, really glossy look, right? That iridescent bug look. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and Stryker's mentioning that um, Ignite is a hot topic in the community right now. Haha, <laughs> hot topic. It's funny. It's not funny. I don't know. <laughs> That's a um, pretty funny joke. <laughs> and, funny. and yeah, there are some people that are worried that it's a little bit too good, but I've seen it in play a lot. And with both protectors and destroyers getting a way to remove debris tiles from the board, I feel like it's not going to be a problem. But if it is a problem, you know, in, six more, in six more months or so, because um, we're doing errata generally every six months, so there should be one coming out in, in this month or maybe probably more than likely early February. And those erratas are chances to readdress things if there is some sort of weirdness or imbalance. A, a balance problem. We haven't balance errated Monpoc yet, and my goal is to never have to errata it for balance. But if there is some sort of issue of something that the community is noticing and that we're seeing in a lot of events is a problematic aspect then we will try and address it in a, in a slight way. But also, as the game evolves, the, the meta of the game will shift and things will, will change. And I, I, I hope that if Ignite is really powerful, then 
then scavenge is the counter to that to a certain extent. All right, now I'm going to do some of these edge highlights here. I'm going to slowly do some of these. Steve James would like to know, Jordan, how long have you been painting? How long have I been painting? So there's a couple of different answers to this question. About an hour. Yeah, yeah about an hour. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm muting Oz's mic now, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Um, Gosh darn it, Oz. Uh, this is why we keep Oz around, everybody. Round of applause. Uh, anyways, uh, in answer to your question, um, I have been painting models for, um, I don't know. Uh, I moved up here when I was 12, 26, 14, call it. 16 to 18 years um, total on and off uh, to a level like what I do now, only about two or three years. Uh, I think I've been working here for just about three. I feel like. <coughs> I feel like it's around three. Yeah, I've been here for about three years. Um, well, you got here before the launch of... Mark three or after? Right after. Okay, that was. Uh, no, no, I, I started the year that Grimkin came out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was here at least a year before Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been here for a little while now, um, and yeah, I I started painting full time um, for this job. So, um, and I've I've gotten quite a bit better since since I started doing this. Well, that's how you get better at anything is doing it. And yeah, a lot. When you become a full-time painter and you paint something like hours seven a hours a day yeah. or more, then, yeah, you're going you're gonna to improve. I would like to throw in that as part of that improvement, I imagine it was uh, a lot of new challenges being thrown at you too. So it's not like the, the hours a day is good practice, yeah. but also being in positions where you have to Try something. New Try first. something different. You know, yeah. get out of your comfort zone. Learn a new. I mean, also learning technique. from you know your your peers. Right? Yeah, like I learned a lot of things from from Brendan when when he was here. Is a pretty big part of um, me becoming a lot better, and I thank him for that. Well, that's why going to paint nights at game stores is really helpful because yeah, you learn a lot. You're going to pick up things that you don't know how to do, and. Having some, just like you guys trading models and you know playing Looking around them. with them, having someone physically help you. Oh, it's so much. Or show yeah. you specifically in real life how to do something. This this stream is handy, but it's it's not going to be as helpful as sitting down with a person who paints better than you and having them help you paint better. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I'm good at taking that advice because I don't paint good and I don't want to. But <laughs> yeah, but you just don't. Want I was just like, not that I ever show up to a paint jam or anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to paint badly at my own home. Thank you very much. In the comfort of. My my problem with getting better at painting is I take long breaks. Yeah. No. Me too. I I lose I, all the practice I get. Yeah. I I paint I paint in rushes for deadlines, and then I tend to take off. A while, because um, I'm not always inspired to paint. But when I'm working on a new army or something like that, I get excited and I paint it, and then I might go another month or two or sometimes six without touching <coughs> a paintbrush. Did I get that? I do. Yeah. I think the longest <coughs> I've gone without putting a putting paint on a model is almost a year. Man, but that was because I, I can't I, imagine not painting for an entire year. Sure. That's crazy. I, did, I think I did a big rush to get an army ready for lock and load. And then I think I hardly painted anything until the next lock and load. Yeah, I definitely have phases. That was Grimkin, wasn't it? No, no. I did, uh, I did a big Man of War army oh. in 2016. But before that, I did either a Pharaoh army or a my Rulik army. And it might have been the Pharaoh army. Because I needed to paint... I think I needed to paint a Midas theme force in Mark II in a month. And I think I painted 26 models or something like that. 
in a month. Yikes. And well, two of them were bone swarms, so that was easy. But yeah. I've actually painted a bone swarm where I went in with all the face and the sugar skulls. Uh huh. That takes a long time. Yeah. You, you don't realize how many skulls are in a <laughs> bone a lot swarm. Of them. <laughs> a lot of in there. Um. So we're right about our hour, yep. Jordan yep. and pretty much Lauren. Done. If you want to show off your progress so far, and then I, I kind of want to go out. Two plus tough has a question on chat, which after we look at the models, we can we can talk about for a second. And then so uh, I didn't really get the front of his face done, but I got I got the back carapace done, so you guys can kind of see what that looks like. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty good, pretty nice and shiny. You got that nice, like, reflective hit on the top, and it's got that nice gradient of color. Oh, you got way brighter on yeah. the, the tips there than I yeah. did. Yeah. Well, you haven't put your last. No, that's true. Last, that's yeah. true. That, yeah. Jordan was starting to edge highlights, though. Right. So yeah, this is kind of, kind of what you're what you're looking for when you want that like really shiny, reflective like carapace. Man, look. it looks good. Yeah, it does. The model is great. So there's that. Tony, you said you had, a, you had a thing. Yeah, so I thought this might be a good good question to go out on. Two Plus Tough is saying, um, how do you keep motivated to paint? He's feeling a little bit of burnout. Um, have a good group of people that you paint with it helps. They can you can be inspired by other people's work. Take a break every once in a while. Like it doesn't hurt. Like I, I go in between having big spurts of like wanting to paint a bunch after work and not wanting to paint a bunch after work because you know depends on what my mood is like like and what part of the month it is like if it, if i'm doing a big crunch to get all the packaging done like i don't really want to go home and paint but if you know i'm having a fairly leisurely couple of weeks at work where i don't not as crunched to get everything done yeah i'll stick around and paint for an extra couple of hours after work and just hang out. Yeah. So I think the thing that's helped me the most is dedicating space to it. Yeah. Like I know people who are like, I can't, I, I can't get motivated to paint because every time I paint, I have to pull all my stuff out and get my table ready. And not everybody has space, has mm -hmm. a good apartment and stuff. And I know that that almost year I took off is when I was living in a very, very cramped apartment. I had a terrible little tiny desk in a corner and stuff tended to be put in front of it. So to get over there, I had to move stuff around. But now I have a dedicated space with a pretty good table. I just got a brand new lamp, which I'm very excited about. Nice. Yeah, because you, I had a really terrible lamp. Set up, and so if you can easier. just sit down easily, turn a lamp on, and put paint on a model, then you don't have that psychological hurdle of, well, I have to, I have to set it all up and then whatever. Because now, like a couple days ago, I had painted my Captain Crawtooth over the holidays. And I hadn't got around to basing him yet. And so like two days ago, I just sat down and based Crawtooth and then it was done and I walked away. And like having, yep. having that availability to spend a half an hour doing it or six hours doing it and not needing all the prep time mm -hmm. is a big thing that will let you just sit down and do stuff. Yeah, no, and I definitely That's agree. what I did in my Christmas break. I just built a new paint area yeah. for myself. It's yeah. so nice. This, and it may sound counterintuitive. One thing that works for me is not, is, is forgetting about the motivation part and like you're not you may not always feel like painting but if you have um a, a a deadline like for an event you're trying to hit or if you're just trying to finish that army so that you can play with it um kind of keeping that in your mind of i want to get this done can help push you forward also breaking down the overall goal into small bits if you're having trouble sitting down to paint so instead of like, I have to paint this model or I have to work on this army, is like, all I gotta do is sit down and paint that jacket green. And then that's it. And if you paint the jacket green and you do that every day, then you'll make some progress. Uh, more than likely, once you actually sit down and start painting with just that one goal in mind, you'll probably keep going, uh, do a little bit extra, you may actually find your zone. Yeah, that's, so. that's a pretty good point. Like. I, I definitely find a lot of the time like getting started is the hardest part. Once once I have a project started, it's it's a lot easier for me to just be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to work a couple hours on this thing because it's already in progress and I just need to like finish it. You know? Yeah, de deadlines are the other thing that I have to do to 
to get myself going. Yeah. Like, I don't when, put deadlines on my own personal projects quite as much, but um, definitely like I get more. If, if, I don't have, if I don't have deadlines, even if it's like, hey, we're going to get together two weeks from now and play Riot Quest on Saturday, yeah. then I'll be like, oh, I'm going to get this new model painted in time for that day kind of thing. So it doesn't have to be a hard, crazy deadline. No. But just little things like that. Like one of the things that's great about us streaming mm -hmm. is that gives me hard and fast deadlines of like, oh, I'm going to be on the stream in a month. Mm -hmm. And I told Tony I would paint the new Monster Apocalypse model we're going to show off. Yeah. Or I'm going to, like when I played my dwarves recently, I, I made a point to get Harlow painted in a, in a, ahead of that stream because I knew I wanted to use him. So yeah. those little encouragement things, you can trick your brain into... To thinking things are more important because yep. you've put a deadline on something. Yeah. yeah. I got a whole unit cool. of precursors painted up for yeah. that. Yeah. That yeah. Well, we're a little bit over, you guys, but yeah. I think we had a lot of fun today. Thank you so much, Lauren, for joining yeah, us. Thank you. Uh, I had, had a, a really lot of good fun. time. Thank you, everybody else, for tuning in. Thank you also, Oz, for being here. You're, you're welcome. Um, we'll see you guys. I will not be here next week as I'm going to be at LVO, um, but. We'll maybe figure out something to do in the interim. Um, but I will definitely see you guys the week after. And if anybody's going to be at LDL, I'll see you there. Thanks again, and I'll see you all later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. I'm watching.